What's up, everybody? So today I have my man Jake in the chair, and he wants a crop top, the messy crop look with a drop fade. Do you want it to drop in the front and in the back, or just in the back? So if it drops in the front, you'll see the C cup a little bit. If not, we can pretty much um, take that out. Okay, so you just want it to kind of be at the end of the yeah. vertical bar and then drop down. All right, sounds good. All right, so we're gonna start out by pretty much saturating the top of the head. All right, after wetting and combing his hair, I was looking for the crown area, and then I combed the hair forward that wanted to go forward, and I combed the hair down that wanted to go down, and then I used the corner of my comb to make a part from the back crown area to the front corner of his bang area. Now I do the same thing on the other side, just separating the hair. Uh, so that way I don't cut off what I don't want to cut off and you know, we're ready and we have nice clean parts. All right, so once again, we're going to go ahead and do clipper over comb. And I'm going to be mindful that he wants this to drop in the back. So just like I would put a guideline, if I was going to uh, drop it in the front and the back, I would kind of angle my comb while doing clipper over comb, being mindful that I want my weight to kind of drop in, uh, in the front and then drop in the back. Because he's not doing that, I'm not worried about it dropping in the front. So I'm actually going to kind of be a little closer up here and then we'll just drop it down in the back. So when you're doing clipper over comb, establishing that uh, first guideline to flow to, to fade into uh, make sure that you keep that in mind that you're dropping the back all right so whenever i'm doing clipper over comb i like to be mindful that at the bottom obviously it's going to be a lot shorter i want to pull my comb out as i pull my comb out i can basically determine how long that it's going to be up here towards the top so i'm going to go ahead make that a first initial cut and now I can see just by turning my comb out, keeping it tight to the head, but pulling it out, I'm already creating a fade just from that clipper over comb, which I think is a whole lot easier uh, than pulling the hair out, hitting it with the shears, and then fading into that. Why don't we just go ahead and let the comb and the clipper do the fading for us? Makes life a whole lot easier. Once again, we want to be mindful about dropping it in the back. And also, when you're doing the clipper over comb, make sure that whenever you're tilting your comb out that you're doing it at the same place. So if we were going to have a traveling guideline, what we would do when we put that first initial cut in, now as I move my way back, I'll see the hair that's longer here and the hair that's shorter here, and I'll just flow right into that. Once again, I'm being mindful to continue to drop down and I'll just kind of tilt my comb off of the round of his head. Now I'm just coming back, basically just checking, you know, my work, make sure that we have everything nice and smooth. If I'm in the way of the camera, I apologize. It's hard to uh, cut from this angle and do clipper over comb. So just coming through to make sure everything is clean and smooth. 
That way it'll be less work whenever I'm actually doing my fading. All right, so now that we kind of created that basic shape that we want, now what I like to do is I like to drop a little bit lower in this area, kind of lay my comb a little bit tighter to the head and just knock out some of this bulk that I have. So that way, whenever I set the first guideline for my fade, then it'll just flow right into that shorter hair and I skip a whole lot of the guards. Um, I would rather not have to set in my first guideline, bald it out, and then you know keep using guards all the way up. If I could do this and just knock it all down while at the same time blending the hair, then I just fade into it at the bottom and it makes things go a lot quicker. So uh, in the shop, you know, we want to have quality haircuts. We want everything to look amazing. But at the same time, we want to make sure uh, that we have speed as well, right? So what I like to do is wherever I want to start my fade, I like to drop a little bit lower than that. And I always like to use my clippers and I like to go up, not punch in a hard line. I like to go ahead and create a soft guideline first. We can always uh, shave out the bottom a little bit later, um, but why put in a hard line that you're gonna have to take out later? Uh, just go ahead, close your clippers all the way, create your guideline, and then you can go from there. Now we can either inch it up a little bit at a time while opening our click lever, or we can go ahead and open it right up and create that second guideline and then close it halfway and knock that out. Whatever you feel more comfortable with. Uh, today we're gonna go up slightly and I'm gonna kind of flick my wrist. The reason I'm gonna go ahead and flick my wrist is because we're creating that blend while we're doing it and we don't wanna create a really harsh guideline even at the second guideline. Okay, before we move any further, let's make sure that we go ahead and blend out this uh, first part. So we're gonna close the clippers halfway and then we're just gonna come in and softly try to blend out this line. Sometimes you may have to open up the clipper a little bit. Sometimes you may have to close it a little bit, but we're gonna focus mainly on knocking out this bottom line. So I had it open halfway. Now I'm gonna close it one more notch, not fully closed. Uh, and then we're just gonna drop a little bit lower, continuing to work on knocking out that bottom line. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and cut with the number one open. Just remember, we're gonna go ahead and flick out because we don't wanna cut into what we've already established. And I'm not going really high at all with that number one just giving myself enough room where I can blend into what I've already cut, but also have a little bit of room where whenever I shut the trimmer, or excuse me, whenever I shut the, the, the number one guard, then I still will be able to cut a little something. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close the number one all the way.
as you can see, if I see any little dark lines in the higher part of the fade, if it looks like I see anything, I can always go in with the corner of my guard and lightly tap at those dips in that dark area. All right, we still have just a little bit of that faint line at the bottom, so I'm gonna throw a zero guard on there. And uh, once again, we're gonna go all the way open. Uh, just to be careful, usually I would go halfway open, uh, but I'm gonna go all the way open just to make sure that you know we don't cut into the fade area. I'm just trying to take out this bottom line. If that doesn't hit it, I'll close it halfway. And if that doesn't hit it, I'll go ahead and close it all the way. But I'm, it's better to be safe than sorry. All right, so now that we pretty much have that done, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna use the Stylecraft Flex, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, I don't wanna go way up here, but I'm just gonna, you know, drop a little bit lower than where I created my guideline with the clipper closed, and I'm just gonna, you know, push, push this hair down. The reason I like to go down with my trimmer, I feel like it gets nice and close, but also, man, it just mows that hair down so much quicker in my opinion. And there again, you want it to be clean, but you want it to be fast. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use the UV shaver from Babyliss on the bottom. I'm just gonna lightly touch the bottom. All right, so we got the basic shape done, right? And so whenever I do clipper over comb, you know, and lay that foundation, what I like to do also is, uh, you know, stand in front of him or behind him and, you know, make sure that the angle is accurate. So if it's not, you know, then you might have to take a little bit more off of, you know, one side or the other, whatever. So once you have the basic shape done, which we have now, I cleaned up his beard off of camera. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and focus on the top. Now I'm gonna come in, right in the middle, boom. Same thing you can do uh, with the scissors, do it with the shears, boom. We're gonna keep this all the way across, just straight, all the way across. Just cut my glove open, that's all right. So I'm just gonna keep going back, section at a time, boom, straight across. I wanna keep that square look. So I'm gonna go ahead, keep my fingers straight. Most of the time we would round the fingers to round into that. We're not going for that look. We're going for the crop look, so it needs to be boxy. So I'm gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and keep the fingers straight. Trying to pull up all the hair from the side, keep the fingers straight. And bring it right into the middle. Now on this side, there again, our middle section is the guideline. We're gonna go ahead, keep the fingers straight. All right, so you might say, yeah, but what about texture? He wants texture in his hair. No problem, we can give him texture too. So we're just gonna go ahead, come in here, and just give him some chunks in there. I like to come down at an angle, you're still keeping that boxy look, but now you're just putting some chunks in there. And you just do that all over the head. If you want it more textured, give them more, more chunks in there, you know?
All right, so now we basically got the shape that we want. Use clippers the whole time. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of the Toon 45 powder in his hair. All right, now we're gonna use some of the Toon 45 indestructible clay. All right, so I feel like we have a pretty dope shape. I feel like the blend is coming together nicely. Um, now I like to go through, now that we laid the foundation, we got the shape right, we got a nice looking blend. I like to go through and now do my detail work. So uh, usually whenever I'm cutting a crop, I like to go ahead and instead of just doing my shear over comb technique, a lot of times I like to break out the thinning shears because um, then we can go ahead and soften down some of that weight line and we can also hit some hairs uh, that, you know, maybe throwing the fade off just a little bit. So, so basically I'm gonna show you what I'm doing on, on camera. I cannot hardly see from this angle, just trying to stay out of y'all's way. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and off camera do what I need to do and then I'll show you the final, the finished product. All right, so this is the finished product. Right now I'm just doing a little detail work. Uh, you know, I like to make sure I clean everything up, make sure it's styled nicely. But yeah, guys, this is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, God bless you guys. Peace, I'm out of here.